Hello, people. You saw the title of the video. Um, there is this prophet. I, I, I wanna. I, I lost after prophecy because the Bible say lost after prophecy. The only thing God wants us to lose after is prophecy, because prophecy will eliminate you on your life, and in the life of your family, and possibly the life of your community. I just wanna fold my arm while I'm talking today. Okay. So this prophet that is well known, he has prophesied many times things that are true, that happen. But he said something recently that I question. You say, oh, come on. How can you go against such a prophet? I don't want to call his name because it's not about embarrassing him, but you might even know him based on what I'm saying. If you are familiar to the prophetic word or if you are familiar with prophets, Okay, so he said recently that God gave him a message for Donald Trump. By the way, he prophesied for the 2020 election that Trump will win and Trump lost, which uh, have a, a strong blow to his ministry because he was very accurate till then or most of the time till then. And that was a big blow to his ministry. People criticize him like crazy and all that. So now he's saying again that well he, he said after he said the recent message that I'm talking about, he said Trump, God gave him a message for Trump, Donald Trump, that he was he became proud and everything. When Trump was in office, please hear this. When Trump was in office, he said God gave him a message that Trump is no longer humble. Hashtag, Trump has never been humble before. So we can talk about he's no longer humble. Did you hear that? Trump has never been humble before. Trump has never shown a sign of born again before. This man has so much evil in him. He live every day lying. People has counted. I wish I have the number exactly in my head. People have counted, fact check, things that are obviously true. People have counted during his four-year presidency, things that he has said that are a lie, that represent a lie, okay, that are lies, plural. And they have counted 32,000 some number. They have their number exactly from the, his first day in office until he left office, how many lies he has told. Let's just... Uh, stop the chase and say he has lied more than 30,000 times. Again, this is not by Democrats, so we can say, oh, Trump is a Republican. They are just trying to discredit him. This was done by individual, independent people, not belonging to a particular party or whatever. So he has lied at least 30,000 times. If you split 30,000 lies, over the, the course of four years that he was a president, you do the math. So this man lie almost every day. I mean, I have seen testimony of some people that were in his cabinet that, for example, they will prepare a document for him to talk to the people and they will say, for this, say 84, 84%. And Trump will go there and say 97%. Hear me, right? His, his cabinet people will say, hey, I thought we say you should say 84%. That's what we, we, we have found out. That's what we agree on. And Trump will tell them, well, I know. I know that's what you say, but I just believe 95%, 97% sound better than 84%. So that's why I say that. So that man is humble? He has ever been born again? No. Okay, that's the parenthesis. Let's go back to what the man said. The man said God gave him a message that Trump, He's no longer humble at his 30 year in office. And I'm saying that Trump has never been humble, has never been saved. There was a time he considered God a little bit through influence of religious people around him. But Trump has never confessed Jesus as his savior. He has never said he started a new life where he will stop sinning, he will stop lying, he will stop cheating, and he will stop putting people down. There has never been a sign that we have seen Trump life has been in, have been in the public 
that we have seen anything that this guy have a sign that he's born again, even for a month. So this prophet said God gave him a message during the third year of uh, President Trump. So that might be like around 2019 that he is no longer humble, quote unquote. And then uh, God gave him a message for him. So now let's talk about the prophet. This prophet, he talked about seeing almost all the people in the Bible that came to talk to him. He talked about John, the beloved, in the New Testament, the man that Jesus loved. People want me to misunderstand Jesus loved that man. They, they talk about gay thing, which is crazy. He talked, I heard him because I follow him. I follow many preachers. I want to learn. So he said, God sent John to him to talk to him one time. Moses, mostly all those people in the Bible. Elijah, this person, that person, and all that. Okay. So, and this man, he generally talk about, he went to heaven, he went to a meeting in heaven. Almost every week, this man go to heaven. So, I'm a prophet of God. I can prophesy to the nation. I go to heaven almost every week to meet with God or Jesus or have a meeting in the celestial place. By the way, if you meet God one time, if you meet God one time or Jesus one time or you have a revelation of going to heaven one time, your life will be so empowered to last you a lifetime and the miracles that will be about you cannot be described because nobody will ever meet Jesus and remain the same. Did you hear that? The apostle Paul, for a Peter, for example, was, was a weak man. He wasn't solid and he was confused a lot, but... The fact that he walked with Jesus and he, after he received the Holy Ghost, Peter has produced a very good result. I feel like preaching now. And Paul, who was a killer and a persecutor of the saints, mm -hmm. oh, I feel like preaching now. Again, I just want to keep my hand folded. And, 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 and Paul met Jesus on the road of Damascus. And Paul has never been the same again. So, this man goes to heaven almost every week. Sometimes, almost like every day, he goes to heaven or something. Because he will say, hey, God sent me to a meeting in heaven, and I went to heaven, and this and that, and that. He would talk and talk like that. So, God give you a message for Donald Trump. I know I'm, I'm taking time on it, but I want everything to be clear. Because so you can know the, the credentials of the prophet and, and the message he has. God gave me a message for Donald Trump. And then, I hear the noise one second. So, he goes to heaven often. And God gave a message to this man to go give to Donald Trump. Who he considered a child of God. He considered Donald Trump a child of God. I'm sorry, but I disagree with that. A Trump has never been born again. Trump can be... Somebody flooding religion recently because he said he never asked for forgiveness before. He clearly said that. Years ago, he said that. He never asked for forgiveness because he hasn't done anything to ask for forgiveness for. That's some video. And we never seen any sign, even a month in his life, that this man is experiencing some changing, some transformation, being born again. And when God gave the message to this prophet to give to Trump, he was unable to deliver the message to Trump. He knew some people that could connect him to Trump so he can go see Donald Trump in the White House or whatever to tell him the message from God to him. And they tried. They were unsuccessful. Anti-Trump left office. Did you hear that? So I'm a big prophet of God. I see heaven every day. There should be a big power about me. And God gave me a message for a man. God gave me a message for the man. And it will, I was just unable to deliver the message. Wait a minute now. Ah, oh, I thought this, this, the Bible didn't say this, but I thought that they say when God gives a vision, he gives a, a provision. When God, uh, is directing you, he will make a way so his will can be done. I thought the Bible said that 
God's word will not return to him unless he accomplishes uh, his goal. So when God sends you a message to go give to someone, uh, I, I believe that God will equip you and give you all the necessary information and detail and the people needed, everything needed for the goal of God delivering the message to you to be accomplished so you in your turn can deliver the message uh, to the recipient oh I, I feel like preaching but i just want to fold my hand here and, and, and try not to get into the preaching so much because once i start moving my hand uh, i'm fold my hand start moving my hand there will be big fire in this place uh, and as i'm not preaching as such I just want to be quiet a little bit. Is anybody hearing me? So this man was unable to deliver the message. Until Trump left office. He just mentioned it recently. In October, this thing. This year, 2024. After Trump left office. So he's saying that Trump has lost his fire. He's not even admitting that Trump has was saved. And he basically is no longer a child of God. He's maintaining that he's still a child of God. That he just has some little problem. Which I disagree with seriously. So he's saying now, in October when he delivered the message, October 3rd to be exact, 2024, years after Trump left office, that he find out, please hear this, this is the goal of this message. He find out that there is a witch in the cabinet of Donald Trump. The members of the cabinet of Trump, the people that was closely to him, he's saying there is a witch among them, a woman. The way he said, we didn't say wizard. And that witch, that's, that witch was the one that hindered all their attempts to see Donald Trump. Did you hear that? Oh, I want to say that again. This prophet, powerful prophet that see God every week, he is saying that there is a witch in the cabinet of Trump. He just find out after Trump, he couldn't deliver evidence in Trump left office. That the witch in the cabinet of Trump was the one who hindered them spiritually when they were trying physically to connect with this person who helped them to see Trump and it didn't want all the attention, didn't want anti, anti Trump left office. That witch was the one who hindered them. Uh, from seeing Donald Trump, remember to deliver a message uh, that God Almighty has given him to Donald Trump. Wait a minute, I, I, I have a problem with that. I have a problem because how can uh, a witch uh, be able to stop you, a powerful man of God that has seen personalities of the Bible in your room, in your house, or many times, in your hotel, or many times, and you even participated in meetings in heavens many times, but you want to tell me that a simple witch right here on earth, in America for that matter, not in India or Egypt or Ethiopia or some other part of the world where the level of witchcraft uh, is very big, if I can say that, there's witchcraft everywhere. There is a church of Satan in the U.S. I know that. But somehow a simple witch from Trump's cabinet was able to stop you from delivering your message. I, I, I have a, a serious problem with that because I'm praying to God to see Jesus just once. And I have the faith and I know through reading the Bible and and a testimony of people that have seen God that I, I have heard that if I just meet Jesus one time, either through revelation in my dream where I sent to heaven or physically, I, I want the physical one, but if I can just do it one time, my life will be filled with so much power. Uh, God will not give me a mission that will be unaccomplished because of uh, devilish power. Did you hear what I said? That's my faith anyway, but that's what I believe. Because everybody that made God, the message of God to them get accomplished no matter the opposition. But this powerful prophet wasn't able to deliver the message until Trump left office. Hey, people, you see, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 to 21, that we should 
test prophecies. Did you hear that? We should test everything. We don't just take that because you said that God told you and this and that. We, we just take it like that. It's not like that. We can test things to see for ourselves. Uh, because if you are saying something that does not line up with the word of God, uh, we, we will not be able to see. Just like this prophet that said, to find a man in the in his church and he said he have his wife right here in the church. And while he's, he's talking now, it was revealed that the man is already married. Did you hear that? So God is telling you to give a second wife to the man that is already married. Ah, oh, something is wrong with that. Let's just say that the Bible is right and your prophecy is wrong. Because God will not want to give a second wife to a man who is already married and still married. But that prophet twists it around to say, well, that wife is not the right one for you. And it will not work. And you need to divorce him. And God is already having plan B for you. Ah, people, that's a little complicated. So, this man couldn't deliver the message. And I don't think he's, he, he has ever delivered it, even after Trump left office. And let's Trump watch one of his videos, which we don't know about. People, I just want to tell you that we need to be careful when we are saying God says... Because when God says, first, it should align with the word of God, the written word of God. And number two, what is the fulfillment of God said? And if God send you, he anoints you for the task. This man is just a prophet. He's not even may have any children. He just dedicated to God like that. He go to every, every minute and all that. And you can deliver a message because of a witch. So the power of the witch was so strong to hinder you, the powerful prophet, from delivering your message. You say, oh, Brother Angelo, or Minister Angelo, or whatever you call me. You say, but Paul, the devil hindered Paul in his ministry. Yeah, but Paul still accomplished his ministry. The devil has delayed him, has hindered him at one time or another. But at the end, all the will of God for Paul was accomplished. So this man remained uh, has not uh, still has not delivered the message God gave him uh, oh in 2019 to Donald Trump and up to now he has not delivered the message people may God help us let's not get caught up in anything you see I, I fear before I did this message because I'm like this man is a powerful prophet but I've been thinking about what he said for days and it just doesn't seem right with me because I'm afraid that. So if I see God one day and my life is still so weak that a witch can challenge me and a witch win over the situation, I don't want to accept that because the presence of God affecting me when I see God, it should change my life while no demonic force, no human force, no animal force, no technology force should stop me from accomplishing the direct mission God gave me to do. <sighs> May God help us. Take care.